Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll learn how we can fetch dynamic data from MetaField into a function and then we can run it. In the previous video, we learned um, different methods of using Shopify uh, function and we hard code the values for volume discount in here. This is not the best thing. This is our function file and we hard code the volume discount. And every time you want to add another extra value here, you have to come here and update it here. Then you have to redeploy it for this to work. It works if you are working for a company and you are the only developer to bring the changes. But still, to give the user the ability to edit everything from the admin, that is the best thing that you have to do. That is what you will learn in this video, plus a few other things. So let me give you a, a bit of more example of what I mean. If you check our uh, function creator app, this is free. You can install it on development store. Try it out. There is a lot of functionality that you can learn from. Um, this is I have what I have installed in the development store in here. I'll show you how it works. If I go to a product discount, I have a nice UI here. I have different types of campaign. User can select conditional discount and then they can select customer qualifier based on tags. If I come here, um, I can go with a card attribute. I, I can go with some items if it has based on product ID, so on and so forth. This is just an example. Like, uh, it's not about the, um, the PowerX. These are all the functions. I save them in the database. And then apart from database, I also save part of this configuration in a meta field, in the function meta field. Then I query that in my function based on those conditions. I, disp um, I apply the changes. I recorded this video last week for 20 minutes explaining everything step by step, but the OBS, the video editor, uh, the video recorder that I use was stuck in one window. That's why that video was corrupted. I have to re-record this. But I will do this quickly this video because I already have written the code. Uh, that is how it works, okay? Now, let's go back to our code and I'll show you what I have done. Um, this is the, the, the completed version of the code, but you can check the video description. The source code is available on GitHub. You can view that, we can see all the changes. And this is what I have done. In the app dashboard, if you go under the volume discount, in here, I added this basic functionality. You can add some volume discount. If someone add four products, you are going to give them, um, let's say 30%. Okay, this is the percentage and this is going to be the message volume discount when i add this behind the scene i create um, an array that looks similar to this then i store that in a meta field when i store that in the meta field i can access that in this function that is how you can store the configuration okay again there are two different places that you store it in this video, I cannot explore, explore everything where you can save data in the database and meta object or anywhere else, but you can check ship ready. This is a course um, that I have for ship plus videos plus um, a boilerplate template based on Remix that will speed up your development. Please watch the intro video and it will tell you like what this uh, ship ready does with the 40 plus videos on how you can build Shopify app faster. In this video series, I explain how you can interact with a meta object, meta field, and create nice UI with Polaris easily. Um, this is what I have done again. Source code is available. Apart from this, I have other videos also you might see on the channel for completely for free, which you can check on building the apps. But if you don't have time, we have a course, we have the template. Now let's start and see what I have done here. When I click save the changes, it is going to save this data in two places. One is meta field which I use the app meta field for storing the data and displaying here. The other meta field is the function meta field or the discount meta field. We discussed this in the previous video. Every function is attached to something. A discount is a, a discount function is attached to a discount. A validation is uh, attached to your validation and you can access that under the, the setting checkout. So these are uh, attached here. Whenever you create a discount, you can pass some meta field to that. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back to the code that we have written. I will close the extension for now. I will open my app. In the route, uh, in here, in, inside the routes, we have volume discount. This is the page that we are. If you have not watched the, my previous videos on Remix, please watch those on the channel for free. This is our loader function. I'm not going to explain this. 
this is our action and this is where we save the data the first thing i do is i get those data from the objects and then i will return a message here no discount apply if there is no discount then i will go and then parse the data here i have a function called create or update app meta field this is a useful function which um, which you can also use all you have to do is pass the admin and also the form data it is going to create this for you create um app meta field for you uh, where is the namespace if i scroll to the top of the website this is the namespace uh, this is going to be the volume discount for the namespace and the key for the meta field is going to be rules these are basic thing you can check the source code but i'll explain again this is going to use create or update app meta field okay and it, it is going to log the file so if i come here and save these changes it should save these changes for me and yeah there's a blink here i can probably fix that but i didn't spend a lot of time in here that's okay but if i check my log do i see any changes here no i don't see anything anything but if i check my log in here you can see it is returning this data this is the exact data that i store in the meta field let's continue exploring here here's the thing this function accept admin which uh, you have to have access to the admin which i import from authentication these are the basic shop file thing if i go to this function here are a few things that happen i have one i get the owner id for the existing app so i store this data for the for the meta field and then i will display it in the admin the other meta field is the function meta field if i scroll down you can see we have a discount input the code is very clear and you can understand everything from here this is the discount input i create this meta field i specify the configuration and then i pass the owner id the owner id this time is the discount you have two of this this one owner id we store this in the app meta field so i can render this in the app dashboard this one is the one that i store in the discount so i can access this in my function this is where i store this and you know, you know i have hard coded this value for now you shouldn't do this like you shouldn't hard code in the previous video we explained this like how you can register a function uh, when you register it you have to uh, save this register id somewhere in the database or meta object later you will use this one to update that for now i just hard code this value here which is not best practice but for for now it works for us and this one is get rules which is reading the data very basic simple stuff now let's go back to our function and see how we can read this i have already implemented the code as i said so if i scroll down here uh, a few things you have to know i'll close my app in the run.graphql file if i open this scrolling down you have discount node and then you can access meta field make sure you specify this and write the proper namespace this was the namespace space specified and this is the key and it is stored in the discount node whenever this input is run in my run.js which is this input i have access to discount node meta field dot value and it is returning a json version of this data i can see if i do have a value let's try this this is the code that i have so what i did here was by default the discounters are coming from this hard coded value but if we have a meta field then use the meta field version because that is what i have here it is going to parse the value for me for this parse data and then it is going to assign it to this variable if i scroll down rest of the code is very simple uh, here i i get the target check the quality the quantity here based on the quantity i am going to apply the discount it also has the max and minimum quantity for your return here if i scroll down to the target this is what we are going to return that is how you can access the data the important part of this video is how you access the data once you save it in the meta field which we did you can um, uh, add it the discount node here specify the meta field key uh, namespace and key and inside your uh, Run.js, you have access to the discount node meta field. For other functions like validation, it will be different. So if you go to the Scott validation, uh, let's go to GraphQL. You can see currently we just bring the card quantity here. This is what we had done in the previous video. It is not doing anything for now, 
but if you want to grab more information about this you have to add those data here and in here you are going to add those details uh, okay cool that is basically how um, you can grab this information parse it in our app which we have again it's not a promotion of the app we have a lot of complex logic all of those logic are stored in a json file that json we parse it based on the parse data we will um, we will apply different conditions um, we are using rust for our app but in joystick it is much easier the only difference is the speed and performance because our app is running on production and we have to um, have complicated like conditions rust is a good idea but if you are building a function which is um, small for a specific store then JavaScript works best and it's the easiest way you don't have to do a lot of data validation here as long as you pass the right data it is working as expected but rust is very different but in the future videos I will explore rust how you can migrate the existing code to rust and why it is more performant when I started working with rust it took almost a month for me to understand how exactly it works and then I started migrating all my functions my functions are very complex but it is always possible to get it done in rust uh, especially with the help of AI a lot of parts you just ask it for explanation I hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and if you have any question, you can always reach out. Thank you.